This formula helps us to determine the conversion value of a convertible bond. Now, in the numerator, we have the par value. The par value is probably $1,000. In the denominator, we have the conversion price. Now, this is a price that will be specified in the indenture. If we take the par value divided by the conversion price, that gives us the conversion ratio. That is, how many shares that we're going to get if we convert this bond into common stock. If we multiply the conversion ratio times the common stock price per share, then we get the conversion value. Okay, so again, the conversion value is the conversion ratio, which is the number of shares that we will actually get if we do convert this bond, times the price per share. Johnson Incorporated bonds have a $1,000 par value. These bonds have a 5.5% annual coupon and a conversion price of $50 per share. Johnson Incorporated common stock closed today at $52 per share. Calculate the conversion value of the convertible bonds. Let's start with our formula. The conversion value is equal to the par value divided by the conversion price times the price of the stock. $1,000 is the par value. The bond is convertible into shares worth $50. That's the conversion price. We multiply that times the stock price, the market price of the stock. So our conversion ratio in this example is 20 shares, isn't it? Because if we take 1,000 divided by 50, we get 20 shares times the current market price per share of $52 gives us a conversion value of 1,040. Davenport Docks has $10 million of $1,000 par value convertible bonds outstanding. The bonds carry a 6% annual coupon rate. The bond indenture states that the bondholder may exchange these bonds for 25 shares of common stock. That's the conversion ratio. As of closing today, the conversion value of the bonds is $1,150. Calculate both the conversion price and the market price of the stock. All right. Well, we know that our conversion ratio is equal to the par value divided by the conversion price. And we are given that the conversion ratio is 25 shares. We also know that the par value is 1,000, don't we? So if we take $1,000 divided by the conversion price and we get 25, we're able to see then that we're able to solve for the conversion price. 1,000 divided by 25 would give us a conversion price of $40 per share. We also know that the conversion value formula is equal to our par value divided by the conversion price times the price of the stock. Recalling that par value over conversion price gives us the conversion ratio, we know that the conversion value, which was given, which is 1150, is equal to 25 shares times the current market price. Simple mathematics from here, isn't it? All we have to do to solve for the market price is to take the $1,150, divide it by our conversion ratio of 25, and we're solving for the market price of the stock, $46 per share. So what are the key points about conversion value? Well, we know that some bonds contain an option that allow the bondholder to convert the bond into a fixed number of shares of common stock. That happens to be the conversion ratio, isn't it? 
This formula is used to determine the conversion value should a bondholder elect to exercise that option. Now it's the bond indenture that's going to specify the price at which the shares can be converted. This price is referred to as the conversion price and is represented by CP in the formula. If we divide the par value by the conversion price, then that gives us the conversion ratio. That is the total number of shares that will be received upon conversion. When we multiply the number of shares that we're going to get times the current market price of the stock, then that's going to give us our conversion value.